Good morning, friends and colleagues in Jakarta. Good day, Australia, and welcome to you all from everywhere else. This is the 15th Sadli Lecture, a series organized jointly by ANU Indonesia Project in Canberra and the Institute for Economic and Social Research, LPMFABUI, in Jakarta. My name is Arianto Patunru, and on behalf of the Indonesia Project and LPAM, we would like to thank the Australian National University and Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade for their support. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea, and community. We pay our respects to their elders past and present. I would like to warmly welcome uh, Pak Sadli's family who always support us. Pak Sadli was one of the most important economists in Indonesia. It was my privilege to organize the very first Sadli lecture in 2007 with Chris Manning and the late Pak Te Kian Wee. So chairing this session brings back the good memories. I remember one day Pak Sadli came to LPM and gave me his new book. He told me that there was a typo in my BIS article that I wrote with Dede Basri. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have good memories with Pak Sadli too. So let's see a short video to see some of them. Sadly, is our former director from 1957 to 1961. When he was director of LPMFABUE, it is a period of political instability in Indonesia. Yet, he can manage our institute to still engage with our network and conduct quality and strategic research. He is a great economist at our faculty, Universitas Indonesia. Even to this day, Pak Sadri still supporting scholarly work through the Sadri Foundation by providing a research grant to young uh, faculty member at our faculty. I will recall Pak Sadri as one of the most brilliant Indonesian economists, one of the best economists that we ever had, a genuine, very smart and a constant optimist. I first met uh, Pat Sadley when, uh, when I visited Jakarta and it was my first visit to Jakarta ever in January 1969. Pat Sadley was at that stage uh, in charge of Indonesia's policies towards foreign investment and I remember going down to see Pat Sadley in a little office in uh, Jalan Chutmatia in Menteng. seminars in Jakarta and Pat Sadley would regularly turn up and often often would write an article afterwards summarizing the results of, of these seminars. It is an honor for us to conduct Hadley, Sadley lectures with uh, together with Australian National University especially given the strong and continued support from Ibu Saparina Sadli.
I would like to congratulate the Indonesia Project, Australian National University, and the Faculty of Economic and Business, the University of Indonesia, for the 15th anniversary of the Sadli Lecture. Yeah. Um, not many academic events could last more than five years. It is important to have a comparative perspective and study lecture help us to provide the comparative study between Indonesia and some other countries. Saya betul-betul berterima kasih dan apa atas jasa-jasa dari LPEM untuk terus memperingati adanya dia. Saya merasa sangat terharu gitu. I really hope that what has what Sadi has done uh, during his lifetime and as a member of LPEM will be a good example for all of you in the near future, young generation. So uh, many of you, uh, most of you, I'm sure, would have seen that we were having Minister of Finance, Ibu Sri Mulyani Indrawati, to give a, the keynote speech. But unfortunately, she was called for a general assembly with the parliament today. We apologize for this. But Ibu Ani has kindly sent us her recorded message. So let's play it now. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all of you. I would like to express my appreciation for the organizer of the 15th Sadli Lecture who invited me to provide keynote speech for this very important event. I also appreciate the organizer to invite all the prominent speaker for this important topic. That is strategy for transforming Indonesia agriculture. Uh, Pak Arianto, Professor Keijiro Otsuka, and Mr. Dian Refindo, they are all going to provide you with a very fruitful and insightful view regarding this policy. I would like to share this morning about how Indonesia responding to the pandemic and at the same time also try to strengthen our food security as one of the most important policy issue in Indonesia. Currently, we are all know that pandemic COVID-19 hit global economy, not exception for the Indonesia. The pandemic hits economic growth and at the same time also can provide a momentum for reform. Historically, Indonesia during the past crisis whether this is in 97, 98 or 2008, 2009, we use that opportunity of crisis to deepen and strengthen our fundamental by launching reform, which is very, very ambitious. In 1997, 98, the banking financial crisis, Indonesia reformed totally, both on economic, political, or even on the legal side. On 2008-2009, triggered by the global financial crisis, Indonesia also reformed the position of financial sector governance, including the establishment of OJK and KSSK. And this time, we are facing with this pandemic COVID-19, which have a very widespread implication for the human being. We launched continuously while at the same time addressing the issue of COVID-19 reform, which is fundamentally changed how we are doing to uh, uh, create an investment, which is a very important factor for the economy. We passed job creation law, the omnibus law, which is strengthening, simplifying, and improving the doing business in Indonesia. We continue accelerating the infrastructure development and we focus on improving the quality of human capital. The fiscal policy is the most important policy instrument in addressing this COVID. With the extraordinary policy, we are creating a powerful counter cyclical in order for us to mitigate the COVID-19 
negative shock to the economy and the people livelihood. The immediate response through our extraordinary uh, law uh, by increasing the budget deficit in order for us to be able to address the issue on health, social protection, supporting small medium enterprises, as well as uh, local government. We continue recovering our economy and at the same time reforming the economy. And of course, by 2023, we need to continue also reforming while at the same time consolidating our fiscal instrument, which has been doing an extraordinary job in the past two years. For 2021, which is a very critical time for us to address the issue of COVID, the threat of COVID is still continue escalating in some countries. But at the same time, we have to also continue focus on recovering the economy. The budget strategy focusing on uh, an area which is critically important for the Indonesia productivity and foundation in the immediate, uh, immediate future. That is on uh, education, health and social protection related to the quality of human capital and also in continue building infrastructure to fill the infrastructure gap. And we also focus on an area which is strategically important like food security, tourism, and investing in the ICT infrastructure. Let's uh, now focus on the role of agriculture sector in the Indonesia economy. We do need know that Indonesia still have a young demographic population. The population will continue growing uh, estimated to reach 320 million by 2050. That means this is a population that needs to be fit. And certainly the discussion or the issue regarding the food security is going to be a very important one for Indonesia in the future. In the meantime, with the growing population, the preference as well as the taste of the Indonesian consumer shifting away from dominated consuming several goods like rice to become consuming on a processed uh, food. And this demand, the shifting demand, definitely require supply response. As of now, if we can see, the rice and maize in Indonesia re relatively has already achieved the self-sufficiency uh, level of production. But other commodity, which is required and now becoming growing a preference by the consumer in Indonesia is still in a shortage. Even in this case, the soybean uh, is also uh, very much consumed by the Indonesia population. We are continuously import. We, Indonesia also continuously import vegetable, semi-processed and processed uh, goods which is even more now becoming the growing and dominant import for the food in Indonesia. So this is going to be both a challenge, but also an opportunity for the Indonesia agricultural sector development strategy. We all know that the Indonesia agriculture sector is a key sector for our national economy. The contribution of the agriculture sector to the GDP has been declining in the past 10 years from 13.6 to 12.4, a little bit pick up in 2020 to 12.9, but it is declining. While at the same time, we also see the contribution in terms of job creation is relatively steady at 38.2 million labor working in the agriculture sector. The productivity in agriculture per labor is increasing uh, at around 10% per year. Growth of the agriculture, especially during the pandemic, is extremely also very good. This is due to the climate, which is favorable to Indonesia economy, but also the preparation and strategy by the government to focus on self-sufficiency, especially on the rice. So what is the government policy to support agriculture sector in Indonesia? I will uh, maybe address mainly on the budget side as a finance minister. 
the government provides budget for food security, which is quite dominant. In 2021, we allocated almost 100 trillion rupiah from the central government, which is majority spending by various ministries, as well as through local government transfer. The spending of the government budget on the agriculture sector has been in the form of supporting the infrastructure like dam or building the dam and irrigation and utilization of technology and also at the same time improving productivity through fertilizer subsidy. We also revitalize the national food system by strengthening institutional farmer or fishermen and food distribution and also to develop food estate such as in the island of Kalimantan, that is central Kalimantan, South uh, Sumatra, and also Papua, in which the land is still very abundant, but at the same time, there is an opportunity to create an agricultural estate on those uh, uh, islands. The target is, of course, to increase and continue securing the rice production self-sufficiency corn production, which is continuously now increased in terms of the consumption, but also for the area of other commodity, soybean production, uh, as well as meat production, and also uh, the improvement in the agriculture, like irrigation and dam and road uh, from the villages to the market. I would like to address the issue which is critically important because it is not only significant in terms of the budget, but also significant in terms of improving and continue strengthening the productivity of agriculture sector in Indonesia. That is the fertilizer subsidy policy in Indonesia. In our budget, this fertilizer subsidy has been allocated around 34 trillion rupiah. But if you look at the history of this fertilizer subsidy in terms of money, it's relatively increased by around 6%. But at the same time, we can see that the use of the fertilizer, which is over fertilized, and also at the same time, the productivity is declining. So in this case, there are a lot of area that need to be improved on our fertilizer subsidy, whether this is in the uh, form of how much you should allocate for each farmer or for land, as well as how we are going to using it and how we are going to improve the productivity of the farmer using those resources. And we also need to also make sure that this subsidy will be well targeted. The movement of the rice productivity in this case is not uh, along or correlated strongly with uh, the fertilizer subsidy spending. That means that we need to address the issue of the targeted, the effectiveness of this subsidy, as well as in the form of whether how we are going to increase through other technology, introduction of technology and economic of scale. We also see in this case that this subsidy is not really helping the exchange rate of the farmer or nilai tukar petani. In this, uh, in this case, the fertilizer is around 10% of the total cost of the farmer. So with this significant amount of subsidy, definitely we need to look at the design of policy rather than just looking at how much money that you need to allocate for this subsidy. Ongoing agenda for the fertilizer subsidy reform has been actually discussed both within the government and with the parliament. It is necessary to improve the mechanism for distributing fertilizer subsidy to make it more targeted by using the data for the farmer through the group of farmer, which should show their proof of land ownership. And of course, this is especially for the small holder land farmer, rather than, than the leak of the subsidy to the bigger farmer or estate. We also need to uh, improve the distribution of fertilizer subsidy through the digital technology 
by name, by address, and introducing Kartu Tani or Farmer Ka. There is an adjustment that is really needed in, in this form of subsidy distribution. The adjustment on the regulatory and institutional as well as the communication and education to the farmer themselves. This farmer card can be started in the form uh, of the subsidy, which then can be combined with other support of the government that is a social uh, support, social support for the household of the farmer. So with that, we are going to be able to identify the farmer family and the farmer itself, especially the small holder land farmer, that they are getting the support needed from the government. On the other hand, I think apart from this uh, kartutani as a way to uh, target it, well-targeted fertilizer distribution, we also need to convert from this subsidy into a non-cash form that then can also have the benefit in the form of financial inclusion. This kind of design of subsidy on a fertilizer has been discussed by uh, the government with the counterpart in the parliament. And the support from the parliament is actually very obvious. We've already asked to redesign and reform and of course, updating the data of the farmer so that we are going to be able to combine the targeted subsidy for the farmer, whether in the form of fertilizer subsidy combined with other subsidy, especially related to the uh, social protection. The financial support for agriculture sector is also not only in the form of fertilizer subsidy, but also in the form of subsidized credit with a cheap uh, interest rate for the farmer. Currently, the total accumulated small credit distributed in the agriculture sector has reached 17.89 trillion rupiah. This is especially for the farmer which is working on the palm, uh, palm plantation, which is around 3.93 trillion rupiah. And then followed by the paddy field farmer, which is 3.21 and then other horticulture uh, farmer. This cheap credit is allowing the farmer to have the capital needed, especially during the planting, uh, planting time, so that they are going to be able to then use the cycle of the season uh, on timely in order for them to not miss uh, the cycle of uh, plantation. The ongoing discussion to improve the quality as well as the effectiveness of our budget support or public spending for the farmer as well as the agriculture area, including establishing the food security in the form of not only fertilizer subsidy, which is already mentioned earlier, but also on our investment capital spending on irrigation as well as support on research and development which is now mainly conducted by Ministry of Agriculture as well as state-owned enterprises. Currently, state-owned enterprises, which is working on the area of agriculture, undergoing their own reform, which is critically important in order to improve their performance. So we are going to make sure that when we support the agriculture policy in Indonesia, it is not only in the form of how much money that you allocate, but most importantly is how you are going to design the right policy so that those allocated budget will be effectively improved and support the farmer and the productivity of agriculture sector. So we are continue is going to have this kind of discussion and I'm sure that this today discussion is going to provide many insights as well as an idea regarding how we should improve our policy in agriculture. Thank you so much. And I do hope that you are all will have a very good and productive discussion. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.